one of the nice things about honors calculus is that we actually design some time where we can stop and dig a little deeper or we can have actually some hands-on experiences um, and not necessarily have to keep plugging through the textbook. What we're going to do is we're going to do just that. We're going to take a look at a little bit more of a deeper look at what, what really is a derivative. Now, remember, when I say derivative, you say slope, but what does that really mean? And the paper that you have here is going to give you an opportunity to dig a little deeper um, in a couple different ways. Now, just to kind of set this up a little bit, and then the main thing is for you to experience this in these activities, namely in the first activity, you're going to be making uh, a connection between the slopes of tangents and a derivative. Now, I'll share with you that you kind of already know what this connection is. Okay, you already know the derivative, the connection between a slope and a derivative, but I still want you to kind of experience it. Ultimately, I want you to draw it. And when you draw it and count, you're going to see how a slope of a tangent goes with a derivative. So that's kind of a nice warm up. That's something you've actually seen before. As you get a little more into the activity, you're going to start to see some new things. Now, here we have the slope and the graph of the derivative. And that sounds like just kind of a lot of words, but you're going to end up graphing a derivative. We actually haven't really done that before. And uh, once again, making a connection. Okay. Now, um, when you get to activities three and four, it's actually going to be backwards of what you did in activity two. And again, I'll say to you, you haven't done this, but I'm going to be giving you the graph of a derivative and you're going to end up trying to come up with the original function. Okay, now there's also a bonus with the activity, and basically that's going to be to discover a new rule. I'll let you see that when you get there. Now, part of this activity is to do it hands-on. The other part of the activity is to give a little bit of a response. I'm going to have you do that in Evernote, and basically in Evernote, I have already shared with you a note, uh, basically a page, where you're going to be able to think about each of these questions and actually respond with a good answer. Now, I'm going to let you type the answer. Um, you don't have to speak the answer necessarily, but you can speak it if you want. Sometimes students would prefer to talk into Evernote, but I'll let you type it. So normally what happens is students go through the sort of the first activity and then maybe then fire up your Evernote and type up your answer. Because I, when you go through the activity, I want you to kind of ask yourself, okay, what, what is the connection? What did I just see? And so if you see the connection, then type it up, okay? Um, I encourage you to type up your answers to Evernote as you go through each activity. Now, if you're going through it and you're like, I don't see it, I don't see the connection, well, that's why we give you class time to work on this. So if you don't see the connection, make sure that you stop and let me interact with you a little bit, okay? I won't give you the answer, but I'll kind of redirect you. Okay, so it's real important that you're not just going through the paper and you're saying, I don't think I'm doing this right. Stop and let's make sure you're doing it right by again asking. So I'm going to get you started here with actually the first activity. Now I said that you actually kind of already know what's going on here, but let's still make sure that you're off to the right track. Okay, here's a function and you can see that I've given you some points. Now these points, they appear to be sort of weird, like just random um, I'm trying to take you to a special place, at least as close as we can get. Uh, the point 2.85, negative 0.78 is really close to this minimum. So let's like make it the minimum. That way when you draw the tangent line, you can actually draw that tangent line, well, of course, perfectly horizontal. Okay, now the whole idea here is for you to count the rise and the run. But we all know that the rise and the run of a horizontal line is zero. Okay? As you keep going through this, again, the whole idea is to count the rise and the run. And I'm not going to draw it, but I know your second point is somewhere over here. And students will sometimes say, how do I get the slope again? Well, you need two points. You know, maybe there's a point here. 
Maybe there's a point right here. I, I know I said I wasn't going to draw this, but if I did draw it, now all I need to do is get the rise and the run. So again, maybe there's a point here and I would rise that much. Maybe there's a point here and I would run. So just like algebra class, nice little rise over run and that'll get you the slope. You're going to be doing some approximating, okay? Please be okay with, the, with some of these numbers maybe being as close as you can get. Um, that's the idea, okay? When you get down to step two, then you're going to be getting some exact answers. All right? Okay, dig a little bit deeper and then make your Evernote connections, hopefully, as you go.